Hallelujah, precious one. This is Pastor Dennis here once again on Just a Word. I am going to continue from where I left off last week on my teaching on the hindrances to prayer. And on my last um, video um, that I made, I mentioned that prayer is an integral part of a Christian's journey. And so the enemy will try as much as possible to throw your way so many hindrances in order that your prayer will not be heard. And so I mentioned or I touched on the first thing that could potentially become a hindrance to our prayer when our motive is ill. So with an ill motive or when your motive isn't right, that could hinder your prayer as well. Now, today I want to move on to the next point on um, uh, a second hindrance to our prayer, with which I'm sure that most people are aware of. And the second hindrance is an unforgiven heart or an unforgiven spirit. Just as the old adage goes, that to err it's human, but to forgive it's divine. We are so um, prone to offend people. That is how we are. You would either offend or be offended. At a point in your life, you'd realize that you have hurt someone unknowingly. Or or you, you or someone has hurt you by their word of their mouth or maybe they did something to you. They said something about you. They acted in a way that you did not expect them to. And these are offenses that you probably might be keeping hold of. But did you know that when you have an unforgiving spirit or your heart is filled with the thought of people who have hurt you, this will be a hindrance in, in, in your presence prayers getting answered. So no wonder you have prayed for so many years for the same thing and yet there hasn't been an answer because your heart is so filled with the thought of what the wrong things that people did to you. And as you hold on so much to your unforgiving spirit, it creates within you bitterness. And when your heart is so bitter towards others, it becomes a hindrance to our prayer. Now, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 11. 11. The word of the law says that Jesus went to the fig tree and he thought or he supposed that he was going to get a fruit from the fig tree. But unfortunately, there wasn't anything because that was not its season. And so Jesus cursed this tree that no one would ever eat of its fruit. Now from the verse 20 downwards, we realize that in the morning as they were going their way, Peter saw that the fig tree that Jesus cares has died right from its roots. His reaction was that of an exclamation, as if to say he was not expecting that immediately the fig tree would die right from its roots. So the very thing that I think that Jesus is talking about is the power of our prayer. And so when you have faith in God and you don't doubt God, when you have faith in God and you don't doubt God, you are able to command the mountains to go into the seas. But before you command the mountains into the sea, he says something, verse 25, that therefore I tell you, when you stand to pray, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your father in heaven would forgive. Don't get all excited yet that yeah, I know you are able to command the mountains to move into the sea. You are able to cast the fig tree. You are able to do all these things. But when you pray, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive. We are filled with so much unforgiveness. And this is just an act of the devil. He is after your peace of mind. He does not want your prayers to be answered. That is why he wants you to keep on holding on to the grudge. It may have been about 10 years ago. It may have been about 5 years ago. But yet, the thought of it brings so much anger within you that you wish you could do the same thing to the person. It is not of God to have an unforgiving heart. It is not of God to have an unforgiving spirit. I know the devil would cause you to relieve it just to enjoy the warmth of your anger, to enjoy the warmth of your wrath towards that brother, towards that sister. He did it to you and you feel so angry and you are so much irritated. And the Bible says, Jesus says that when you stand to pray, if you want answers to your prayer, if you want that fig tree to be cursed, if you want that mountains to be moved into the sea, before you command all these things to happen, 
happen. He says that forgive men of their sins. Forgive people that have wronged you. If you are still holding on to it, beloved, this will be a hindrance to your prayer life. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, the Bible says that for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father would also forgive you in the same proportion. So when you stand to pray, it doesn't matter the length of prayer or how many hours that you want to spend in prayer. I don't care if your heart is not rid of unforgiveness. It is going to be a hindrance. Have you thought of the power that is going to come out of your mouth if your heart is filled with so much forgiveness, if you're not holding on to the grudges. I know it hurt you. I know you felt so disappointed. I know you felt all betrayed. But if you hold on to the hurt, if you hold on to all that they did to you or what someone has done to you, if you don't let go, you are holding yourself up. You are holding the answers of your prayer. And that is the second hindrance that I want us to, to, to take note of. I pray that you will meditate upon this and you will think about this prayerfully and set your heart. If there is any unforgiveness, if there is someone that you haven't forgiven of their sins, I pray that the Lord will lead you. The Lord will heal your heart so that you would let go of everything that people have done against you, that your relationship with God will be an amazing one. May the Lord richly bless you. I'm going to come your way another time and hopefully I will continue or bring to you the third hindrance to our prayer. God richly bless you. Bye-bye.